This episode of Beauty and the Surgeon podcast is brought to you by Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an online company dedicated to making professional health testing easy and accessible. Let's Get Checked offers fast, affordable, completely confidential at-home health tests from a range of tests from STDs, male and female hormones, and even COVID-19. Listeners of our podcast who are new to Let's Get Checked get 20% off by using our URL, trylgc.com beauty, and be sure to use the code beauty20 at checkout. That's trylgc.com, T-R-Y-L-G-C.com slash beauty, B-E-A-U-T-Y, and be sure to use the code beauty20, beauty20 at checkout. Do it. Getting tested is important. It's the responsible thing to do, and you know how important I think it is to make sure you understand your labs. Welcome everyone to Beauty and the Surgeon podcast. I'm Amy, I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner and I'm joined today as always by Dr. Jason Martin. He's a board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon. Dr. Martin, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, how you doing? I'm good. I am excited to be redoing an episode, another one of our 2.0s. It's a reboot. It is a reboot. It's a reboot of a, of a, a rebooting kind of surgery. So right. I think it'll be good. We're talking about Mommy Makeover 2.0. So, Amy, how many moms do you think there are in the United States? I actually looked this up. So how, how many moms are there? Well, this is kind of a salty subject for me. So just go ahead and tell me. I'm not, even I'm not trying to rub it in your face. Every woman except me. I'm barren. 43 million moms. <laughs> and I didn't get to be one of them. Right. You still can. You still can. There's uh, science. Science. Yeah. We have the capabilities. Um, and how many plastic surgeons do you think there are in the United States? Okay. Board, board certified. Board certified plastic surgeons. Oh, I would say three million. Mm -mm. Higher or lower? Way lower. 300,000. Dude, I'm like a Mandalorian, okay? <laughs> How many do you think? One. <laughs> There's, yeah, 8,000. There's 8,000. 8,000. Wow, that's really low. Practicing. Just in this country, practicing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's low. So I did the math. 43 million, okay, divided by 8,000 is around 5,000. It would take me 20 years, no vacations, four mommy makeovers a week to do my portion of mommy makeovers for the 43 million women out of there. Every single mother. Yeah. Wow. Well, you gotta get to work I, got, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> you got a lot of work yeah, to okay. do. That's 20, 21 goals, just mommy makeovers for a week. <laughs> for a week, all the time. It's like going to the gym, just do a mommy makeover. That's right. Well, let's, as always, we start out, we kind of follow a pretty um, consistent format with these podcasts. If you would be interested in watching the slides that go along with them, you can find those on our YouTube channel at Jason Martin MD. You can also follow us on social media at Beauty and the Surgeon podcast on Instagram. We don't have a ton of slides, but they're kind of the same slides. We got a cool, fun, cool picture and a neat video. So if you're interested in watching, check that out on YouTube. If not, we'll, we'll describe everything in our fantastic describing way. <laughs> First thing we're gonna start off. Really, with, is it really that fantastic? It's fantastic. Okay. I mean, if anyone needs an example yeah, of how fantastic, would you like to explain this color to me? <laughs> 70s Tupperware. Yes. Please look on our YouTube channel. Perfect. So the statistics, I had Sarah pull. We're talking about mommy makeover. So mommy makeover is a combination of many surgeries, but I had her pull the top three that are the most common. Yeah. So what? Well, okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. Okay, all right. So because it's confusing. It is. All right. That's why I said there's a bunch. So I just had her pull three. So in 2019, the statistics for breast augmentation, we've talked about this, is the most common cosmetic surgery that is done. Just about 300,000, just shy of 300,000 breast augmentations were done. Breast lift was about 113,000. So a third, okay. Yep, and then tummy tuck was 123.5, let's say. So- What about breast reduction? How many were there? Breast reduction was 46,000. Okay. Yep. So those are kind of the top three big major procedures that make up a mommy makeover. So leading into that, what is a mommy makeover? I don't, it's such a gestalt term. You used to really hate this term. Yeah, I've, I've kind of gotten used to it now. I just, I gave in to, you know, plastic surgery making stupid names for everything. I mean, moms aren't stupid. I love nope. my mom and I love my wife and she's a mom. Right. And neither of them need makeovers. They don't need makeovers. So in reality, the 43 million moms out there don't really need mommy makeovers, do they? No. Okay. That was, and we asked that in our first podcast about mommy makeover. Like, why do mommies need makeovers? Like, because that was when you were still really offended by this term. Right. I, I've gotten used to it now. I mean, now that we've moved on to Brazilian butt lift, you know, what's next? I don't know. Whatever McDonald's term we're going to give to these surgeries. But mommy makeover is surgery for people that have had babies and gone through pregnancy and have leftover residual issues related to that process. When you get pregnant, your belly gets bigger. And this, these are crazy concepts here, right? Belly gets bigger. Yeah, your breasts engorge with milk. Uh, the breast anatomy and architecture tends to change and so does the anatomy and architecture of the abdomen or your belly. 
And then you have other issues on your inner thighs, your saddlebags, or your outer thighs, your arms, even your neck. All these things can change with pregnancy and it's really common. Mm -hmm. And so mommy makeover is basically a throw, a throw in term for everything that you could possibly do for pregnancy related issues. And, uh, in most cases, that involves the breast and belly. And that's what most people think of, right? When they think of a mommy makeover, they're like, I'm gonna you know, make my breasts better and my belly better. But it can include things for your thighs. It can include things for your arms, even your face, neck, stuff like that. Yep, and I think that's really the key thing here is if you wanna call it a happy meal of surgeries, it's a choose your own adventure. Because not every woman is going to need the same combination of surgeries. Some women just need a tummy tuck and some liposuction and that's their mommy makeover. Some women just need a breast lift and that's their mommy makeover. So it really is whatever surgery you need that's you know being right. done on a woman who's had a child. And it does kind of <laughs> blow some mom's minds because their friend came in and had the breast lift and right. they don't need the breast lift. And why don't I need a breast lift? My or friend can had I still a... get a mommy makeover? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So. I think it's important to understand with a mommy makeover, it's exactly what you need and hopefully nothing more, right? If you look at yourself in the mirror, you're a mom and you're like, ah, oh, really struggling. And by the way, we're with you on this. Like it, there's a lot of moms that come in that need our help. Okay. This is not people just, I don't know, wanting to find something in their life. Like they really have issues related to pregnancy. If you look in the mirror, you can kind of pick out where those areas are. Uh, you know, what those locations are. In some cases, it doesn't involve the belly. That's what people get really surprised about. Mm -hmm. Some people come in and their belly's not really not that bad. Well, or they just are fine with it. And that is a part of this that is okay. Like you don't, just because you want one thing fixed doesn't mean that you have to have all of these other things done. If you love your stretch marks and don't want a tummy tuck, don't get one. Yeah. <laughs> just you do be the thing you. that bothers yeah, you. You be you. Be yeah. your stretch marks. It's okay. Now, I will say this: these are one, some of the more transformative surgeries we do. I mean, you can take people from one end of the spectrum to the other in a surgery. And they're pretty extensive surgeries that are longer. We'll talk about all that kind of stuff. They have a bigger recovery, but they are fairly transformative. So in, in, in that sense, the patients tend to be really pleased with their outcomes. Yeah, well, it's, it's like we talked about. It's a, it's a big change. And, you know, if, let's go to the next slide. Who is a candidate for a mommy makeover, obviously? A moms. Mom, moms, 43 million <laughs> yeah. women out there in the United 43 States. 43 million women, moms. But they're candidates for a lot of reasons. And the big reason is, is that carrying a child to term is a pretty traumatic experience for the body in many ways on a cellular level. I mean, if you think just of the issues that can come from like the stretching of your ligaments during that time frame, and that has a lot to do with where your breasts will start to sag, not just the size. Which uh, What's the name of those ligaments, Amy? Oh my goodness, you asked me this on every breast episode and it's a, it's a doctor's name and I never remember it. Ski. Can you give me Cooper? Cooper, Cooper's ligaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So how could someone so smart be like brain blocked by the name my, Cooper? It's like my uh, blind spot. Okay. My brain is like, I will not remember this information. <laughs> I <laughs> thoroughly enjoy ligaments. this experience because you always like school me with the stuff. So it's my one I finally thing. I get you back. Yeah. Cooper's, Cooper's ligaments. ligaments. So your ligaments and your breasts stretch out, but the same thing happens in your belly too. Right. It happens really quickly, and I think that's really. A key thing to remember is that these changes happen very fast. I mean, you go from two cells combining to suddenly having a baby nine months later to 10 months later, the amount of fluid your body retains, the extra blood it makes, like just how quickly your skin and body has to react to that. You know, it's no surprise that the it's a after shock. effect of that could be, you know. Yeah, your, bo your body, the soft tissue sh gets shocked. It's traumatic. And sometimes there's no going back. We've talked a lot about stretch marks. We talked about it in our scarring episode. You know, once that process is done, like it's done. Like you can make yeah. the appearance better, but you can't make them go away on your own. Oh, I know. And we get so many consults on stretch marks. And I know people are listening to this right now for, specifically for this episode and they want to get rid of their stretch marks. There's not great options besides like surgically removing them. And that means removing skin and soft tissue. Which is fine for the abdomen. But if they're on your breasts, and if they're on your thighs and like yeah. other areas like you know, some it's of those tough. are just, they're just there. So, but surgery does make them better. We'll get to that, but it does yeah. make them better. So I think the, the really big message here is who's a candidate, really anyone. And it can be for any number of surgeries. Like a mommy makeover is, is what you make it. Now, real quick, even though you're a mom and even though we love you and we support you, uh, moms have health problems too. So people that aren't candidates are people that are unhealthy. Guess what? Smoking is not recommended with cosmetic surgery. I get patients that come in all the time. They're like, well, you know, I'll, I'll quit, you know, I'll work on it. I'm like, no, you have to be, stop. And we get a, uh, a nicotine level. What's mm -hmm. that called? A, there's a name for that, like a blood draw that can show if you've smoked in the past 30 days. So smoking is not good. Diabetes is not 
good. It's not good for this surgery. Um, high blood pressure that's uncontrolled, not good. People that have autoimmune problems are on steroids, not a great option to do a mommy makeover. So you really wanna optimize your health decrease the drinking, uh, focus on um, diet and exercise beforehand and go into the plastic surgeon's office kind of ready to go. We had a whole episode on that, how mm -hmm. to prepare for surgery and have the best outcomes. Yeah. So even if your kids are not babies anymore, you're, you still probably are a candidate as long as you're healthy. Yeah. If you're healthy for surgery, you're healthy enough for a makeover. So areas treated, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but the main areas yeah, let's talk with about mommy that. makeover, yeah. like you said, are kind of the breast and the abdomen. Yep. Those are the big areas that are affected by pregnancy. Um, add-on areas are very commonly liposuction is probably the number one add-on above those areas, meaning liposuction of the flanks, the hips, the outer, inner and outer thighs. Yeah. So I would say uh, your hips, your upper waist or your flanks, your um, thighs and your arms are what we do the most of. And what's changed since our last episode is body tight. Mm -hmm. We do body tight assisted liposuction. Also another good episode. You should listen to that. And uh, I would say at least, you know, 30 to 40, maybe 50% of our mommy makeovers, we do some sort of liposuction somewhere with body tight. Would you agree with that? With or without body tight, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, some sort of liposuction. Some sort of liposuction. Yeah. Yep. I'd say it's almost always included, and we talk about that a lot in our tummy tuck episode, almost always, it is extremely rare that we don't do at least some amount of liposuction with the tummy tuck, like extremely rare. And even if it's just a little bit on the sides to kind of feather out the incision. Yeah. Um, very rare that we wouldn't do any. So that's probably the most common add-on. I think for women who are, let's say, over 50 having a mommy makeover, like finally, now their kids are in college or whatever the situation is, we'll sometimes add on a facelift. What was the the, the, the question asked by the our most recent episode? Oh my goodness, if she was she was for a breast reduction. If she was 57? She was like 59, I think. 59, yes. yeah. I thought that Definitely was really funny. I, I thought about that the other day. Yes. I was like, this poor woman, what does she think? What do you do when you're 59? Do you just go off in the woods and just kind of disappear somewhere? Apparently that's it. You just have to deal with your big breasts. You're going to die with these breasts. No. Yeah. <laughs> So listen, hey, moms can be 50 or 60 and they can do mommy makeovers. Yeah. It's okay. We do a lot of tummy tucks on women that are in that 50 to 65 a range. A lot. A lot. Look at our Instagram at Jason Martin MD. There's a patient up there who's mid 60s post tummy tuck and she has a perfectly flat abdomen. Mm -hmm. She was ecstatic about it. So post pregnancy issues that she dealt with for 25 years and she came in, she goes, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm like, well, better late than never. And she was really happy with her results. But the other thing I want to say is the things that have changed since we did the last mommy makeover episode, it's definitely we're doing more ancillary things, not just the liposuction, which I think was common, but we're doing fat transfer. A lot of people are, I'm sure, in certain parts of the country doing BBLs. And then for us, we're actually doing a lot more facial stuff, too. So facial stuff associated with a typical mommy makeover surgeries. So just to consider that if you're someone if you're someone who has issues related to pregnancy and also some issues related to aging, you might want to combine them all in one surgery. Yeah, because there is, you know, we'll talk more about the downtime with a mommy makeover, but there is a significant amount of downtime when you're combining surgeries. You know, anytime you're doing multiple surgeries on multiple areas, your downtime is going to be a little bit more. So while you're kind of down and out, and if you have the child care help, if you need it, it's a great time to add on other things within reason that bother you. Yeah. And, and there is a limitation. Uh, but like if you're talking about a small little face type for the neck or I don't know, a rhinoplasty, rhinoplasty, mm -hmm. nose job, something Eyes. like that. Um, upper eyelid lephroplasty is extremely <laughs> so stop common. Stop looking so tired. Yeah. <laughs> don't look as tired should as you we, feel. Should we go on? Yeah. But really, I mean, you can combine the areas treated, as we've said a couple of times. It's it's your mommy makeover. Basically, basically a mommy makeover should be just like it's plastic surgery for women who've had kids, right. you know. So you you pick and it's choose. Ladies' choice. It's ladies' choice. Yeah. Ladies. It's ladies' choice. It's ladies' choice. Mm -hmm. Was it the I Sadie? Like that. It's the Sadie Hawkins, right? This is a Sadie Hawkins surgery. Sadie like, Hawkins ladies surgery. Choose. Mm -hmm. Lady, ladies' choice. Yes. So before we get like deep into the rest of the podcast, let's take a quick break and hear word from our sponsor. Our sponsor. Dr. Martin, I'm super excited to talk about our sponsor for this podcast. Let's get checked. You, if you've been a listener of our podcast, you know that we have never had a sponsor before, and that's because we're an educational podcast. We're not looking to monetize, and we also would never recommend something that we didn't believe in and or use ourselves. So basically, you're saying we're very choosy. We're very choosy yeah. when we come to our last our testing, but yeah. Let's Get Checked is really aligns with our values. We talk a lot about monitoring your blood values of certain things. We talked recently about vitamin D serum levels. We talk a lot about hormone levels, and it's hard for some people to get to a lab or you're afraid of the blood draw or just, you know, you're concerned about confidentiality, like you have a lot of concerns and you just don't do it. Let's Get Checked makes it super easy because it's completely confidential. You do it from your home. So there's really no excuse not to do it. 
Yeah, and we did it recently. Both Amy and I did it. She looked at her women's health, um, basically her hormone levels, and I looked at mine on the men's health side with testosterone. It was very simple. You go online, their online um, interface is really easy to use and good. Uh, we got the testing kit very quickly. And the test itself, actually doing the stick, you do a stick on the end of your finger is not hard to do. It only took about three to four minutes. You put it back in a sealed envelope that's confidential, goes back to them, you get your results in two to five days. It's really that simple. And the best part is it's about empowerment, about you taking control and trying to do things that are positive for your health and life. And this is one way to do it literally from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, so they offer a wide range of tests. So they do men's and women's hormone panels. They do a full panel of STD testing. They also are now offering a COVID-19 test at home. So there are a lot of other just basic blood levels that you can get tested as well. And one of the things that we always say is you can't track what you don't check. So you might not know what's normal for you in the future if you're not checking it now, especially as it relates to hormones and men's health specifically, I feel like is a little bit under treated. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, sperm crowns are dropping by a large percentage in men these days. Most men um, struggle at some point in their lifetime with low testosterone. And those men do not know what the symptoms of low testosterone are. Depression, anxiety, sleep problems, osteopenia or loss of bone, loss of muscle and something we treat all the time, gynecomastia or male breast growth. These are real problems that can be been, you know, that can be improved or treated with testosterone. And these men do not know their levels. It's so easy to get checked. And this is why we're so excited about the sponsor. Yeah. And let's get checked as a completely CLIA certified lab, the CIL CLIA lab. So they're a well-established, completely safe lab to use. You do get contacted after, so you get your results. I got a text at 4.30 in the morning, which I loved, uh, that my results were ready. And we're both up at 4.30, yep, so, so that I was, was good. Super excited. And you have access to a, not only a nurse, but also a physician. So a physician does review your results, and it gives you a little breakdown of like where you're sitting on those levels. Um, Dr. Martin's had even comparisons of like where two of the levels should be in relation to each other, which is a really important thing to note. Right. You know, Just being within the normal range is not always enough. So it really gave more information than that. You'd still want to, of course, reach out to your own doctor if you needed some additional assistance with these labs or you did see something that was concerning. Um, we didn't, thankfully. So that was good. Yeah, yeah. We, were all, we were both good. You know, this podcast is about empowerment. It's educational in my private practice. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. We are all about empowerment and this is one way to do it. So we're very excited about the sponsorship and we're looking forward to using it for our patients moving forward. Yeah, so as a listener of our podcast, if you're also a new time user to Let's Get Checked, which a lot of you probably are, we do have a 20% discount code. So you do need to go to our specific URL and it is linked in the description box below, but it's going to be try LGC, so T R Y L G C like let's get checked dot com slash beauty B E A U T Y and you'll need to use the code beauty twenty at checkout. Beauty again is B E A U T Y twenty two zero. And you can pick a test, like any test you'd like, put in our code and get your test shipped to you. Getting tested is the right thing to do. It's uh lets you know where you're at and what's responsible. All right. Well let's get tested. Let's get tested. Let's get checked. Let's get checked. Yeah. All right, so let's continue our conversation about mommy makeover with some pictures. So let's look at some before and after pictures. We've talked about the areas treated, who's candidate. Let's actually. Yeah, and if you want to like see a lot of pictures of mommy makeover, you can go on my website, jasonmartinmd.com or any plastic surgeon's website. It's very common surgery. We don't want to inundate people with a lot of photos on a podcast because we care about the audio experience here. But if you happen to be motivated, go on our YouTube channel, Jason Martin MD, and look at these photos. And I picked out a few. There's nothing special about these. One of them is a rather thin lady uh, with smaller breasts and wanted to keep the same size of her breasts, just with a lift and a small implant. The other one is someone who wanted larger implants, not super large, and a big lift. Both of these patients had tummy tucks. Both of them had issues related to their stomachs. Both of them had split muscles and or you know muscles related that changed with pregnancy. Uh, they all had ex excess, excess skin, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, these are my types of patients in Colorado. People in Colorado tend to have a lower BMI, right, Amy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so and uh, we do get some patients that are of normal weight for America, and I love those patients too, but uh, uh, these, these kind of photos are really representative of my patient population. Most people post-pregnancy have droopiness of their breast the ligaments that Amy can never remember, okay? Ski what? <laughs> Cooper's ligaments stretch out. Uh, people lose the breast parenchyma or the involutes, meaning that it's it becomes less volume there. So they deflate and you get this deflated uh, 
tennis ball and a sock hanging appearance. And in most cases, the lift alone will not provide you enough volume to give you a nice breast contour. And that's where we do. See, a, I disagree with that. In some, maybe with our. The breast contour, yes. Now, if someone is wanting to replace the size, and I think that's more common as women want the right. size when they were breastfeeding back. To get the size back. Right, you're seeing it better. There's yeah. not there's yeah. not enough breast tissue. Like very commonly women come in, especially within a few years of breastfeeding and want the volume back that they had when they were nursing. It's okay. probably the most common request. No, you're right, you're right. So let me say this differently. The breast lift puts your breast back up where it should be and really sets the foundation for the shape of your breast. Right, maintains the tissue you have. Maintains the tissue you have. The problem with the breast lift is the upper pole above the nipple and areola. You really don't, you can't get a lot of definition there and a lot of volume back up there, even doing the new and most advanced ways to breast lift. The breast implant itself can give you an increased cup size, which Amy's talking about, but can also fill out a little bit of that upper pole better than a breast lift. But a breast lift alone works great and we love it. We do it. We try to encourage people to just do the breath, breast lift alone if they have enough volume on their breast. Well, it gives you an incredibly natural looking breast. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, if, if you're not looking to increase the volume, doing a breast lift alone is a, is a great option. Right. But most, not most, um, probably greater than 50% choose to put an implant in there too. That's a big surgery. That takes a couple hours. You can watch our mastopexy episode. I don't know when that was. I think that was in the past year, breast lift episode. And that really shows you there's two different types. There's a lollipop incision, there's a anchor incision, and there's actually three types, periareola or around the areola. Um, you can put the implant above the muscle or below. We usually go, go below. And um, you can do some different types of lifting techniques to move the breast tissue around. Kind of complicated stuff, it's hard. Actually, a mastopexy augmentation, a lift and breast augmentation is one of the harder surgeries we do because you have to rearrange the breast and then put an implant in there to make sure it looks good. What I usually do is put the implant first and then reconstruct the breast around the implant. I'm, I'm moving my hand so all the listening audience can see here. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I actually enjoy these surgeries in large part because of the breast component T from the technical standpoint, I mean, yeah. What else? Let's look at these pictures. Okay. <laughs> So again, just kind of reiterate what I said before, if you're looking on the YouTube channel, there's a skinnier, more svelte type of lady uh, who wanted a mastopexy aug or a lift with a small breast augmentation. And that implant, if you're looking, is like mid 200 cc implant. And then the other one is definitely in the 400 range, maybe four to 500 range. Uh, and we also did a lift on her too. Both of them had abdominal plastase or tummy tucks. Cool. And now we got a little video. Yeah, and we added a video in here. So if you're watching, um, it shows you the before and after, and it's kind of like going back and forth doing a, what do you call that Nils? Like a, a dissolve, a dissolve <laughs> technique. Yeah. And it really just shows you before with the stretch marks and the extra skin and afterwards, you really don't see the stretch marks. Um, you have much better contour, but her main issue, and just go to the next slide after this, her main issue is erectus diastasis. And this is like super common. You, you get people in here, they have pretty good abdomens, but still need a tummy tuck and you don't think they have erectus diastasis because you 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 evaluate them beforehand you go in there and you see that they at least have a one or two finger rectus diastasis rectus diastasis is the rectus abdominis muscle it goes vertically amy can teach you the anatomy on that it attaches to your um, lower portion of your rib cage and the xiphoid process and it goes down to the pubic tubercle on the midline and We've talked about many times before that my Pilates teacher was like, if you just do enough of these kind of weird Pilates maneuvers, you can force that muscle over and it's just impossible. There's no physical way to, even if you cause hypertrophy in this muscle and more, more meat to the muscle, that's gonna force the, the muscle back to the midline. And that's what we do. We sew it back together with a pretty unique and interesting technique, certain types of suture and stuff like that. And so if you see this patient, if you saw before, uh, her biggest change on the belly probably is the rectus diastasis repair, mm -hmm. as opposed to just taking out the excess skin and soft tissue. Yeah, and that's something that you cannot fix yourself, and it can really make a person who is extremely lean and has worked extremely hard very, very frustrated because it always looks like your belly's sticking out. Yeah, like you, you, you physically cannot hold it in because of the separation of those muscles. And I think if you look at, if you're able to look at this slide, it's a really powerful one because it shows just how how you kind of see it like you realize like oh yeah like those muscles when they separate like they're really far apart now yeah and like that's there's pressure from your organs coming right out at them yeah like your organs are right behind there 
So the analogy would be, and we all know that old man with the big pot belly, right? And it's always a granddad and he has a huge pot belly. That's all fat around his organs from the inside, pushing his belly out. And that's the same thing as organs on the inside. When you don't have that structure on the front of your belly, holding everything together, it'd be like a Coke can that it's missing a part of it, you know, and everything's just want to balloon out. And that's why even when you flex, you really can't bring it in totally. These patients come in literally flexing the whole time. When you get them up to take pictures, you have to tell them to concent- concentrate yeah. on relaxing. Like just let your stomach yeah. hang. <laughs> and it's even funnier when you're, I'm examining them, right? And they're like, I have to like, at some point, just sometimes sit them down and let them stop engaging their core muscles. So they'll stop flexing so I can actually see how bad their diastasis is. It becomes second nature. Uh, most of these women wear things that compress their belly down. All the time. All the yeah. time. And if if anyone's listening to this podcast and you're not a mom and you don't deal with this stuff and you're like, I don't understand why these women are doing all this surgery, then, I mean, you just need to come in and talk to these women. Uh, are you wearing a compressive garment 24 hours a day so your belly doesn't hang out over all your clothes? And it messes with everything you choose to wear. It, 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 you have actual functional issues because of your rectus diastasis. You can't do certain exercises. You want to exercise to lose weight, to look better, but you can't do it because your muscles aren't uh, properly aligned. I mean, it's kind of bogus, right? You can understand someone who has this amount of issues in one part of their body that they would want it fixed. Mm-hmm. Our Tummy Tuck episode goes through all this stuff. If you look at our YouTube channel, I, I drew this uh I the, love this slide. On the before and after. You mm-hmm. don't think it's too graphic? Nope. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think another really interesting- I, I made the muscle cartoony. Yeah, you did. It's good. You know? I mean, because like if you make it too real, people are like, oh, that's disgusting. Which, by the way, I did show uh, Avery, my daughter, um, the brow lift yesterday, oh, some of the footage from yeah. that. And she and she's wanting so bad to put me on TikTok. And I'm like, well, can you put this on TikTok? It was I was kind of- messing with her a little bit and she was not happy with that <laughs> the injection of the local anesthesia yeah, underneath the like skin like hitting up the muscle yeah. yeah something else i think that's really interesting on this picture is, is you know seeing the stretch marks and how they move so sometimes your stretch marks won't go away completely but if you look kind of on the just above the logo on the right hand side you see that there's some really fine stretch marks right there and if you look at the picture on the left you see that they were actually quite a bit higher mm-hmm. <laughs> they were quite a bit higher so a lot of our stretch marks did go away but sometimes we can't get all of them but we definitely move them down and they look better like if you look at the picture on the right they look a lot more faded there i mean time has passed in between these pictures obviously but more importantly just that tension and we talked about that with scarring in general the tension on the scar on stretch marks can sometimes make them look better yeah like can kind of just make their appearance not quite so red and if you also look on this picture, the incisions are there. And that's another thing about all these surgeries. It's the main concern for any mom that comes in is scars. And uh, Amy and I always take a pragmatic approach. Our scars look great. We're proud of our scars and we put those up against anybody. But I mean, everything has a cost. And you know, if you want the stuff to go away, you're gonna have to have a scar. There is no scarless surgery. If you go somewhere and they're like, our, you know, we do something, there is no special sauce to this, some treatments afterwards, good technique during surgery, but you're gonna have scars. If you look at this picture, you can see her scar. I mean, it's faded, but it's still evident. Mm-hmm. Very, very low, especially for the belly. Underneath almost all types of underwear, unless ones that are really not even underwear. So, uh, you know, like of a normal, female in America, the underwear she would choose to wear, uh, these scars would be covered in it. And it's the same is true for the breast. So the idea is to improve the contour, understanding that you will have scars mm-hmm. after surgery. Yeah. So let's talk, we're talking about scarring. It's a good time to start talking about post-op considerations. One of the things we did not mention, and I guess this is really a post-op consideration as well, another person who is definitely not a candidate for a mommy makeover is someone who has not finished having children. Oh, yeah. I can't. Why did we say yeah. that? Like that's a post-op consideration. And we've had this. Yeah. And it's very funny because you every now and then we'll get the sheepish email. Like, I'm just really sorry to admit this. And obviously most of them are not planned, you know, and they're just kicking themselves because they spent, you know, their hard earned money to look better. Yeah. But they're happy to have a baby. You know, no one's ever sad. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to yell at the baby. But like when I see the results of what that baby did to my work, I'm going to be a little pissed off. A little yeah. Johnny. We do it once, we can do it again. Yeah. <laughs> but in you all can, actuality. You, you can redo a tummy tuck, by yes, the way. Yes, you can. I've done it. We have, yep. In all reality, that's definitely something that we always ask patients when they come in, like, are you finished having children? Because if the answer is definitely not, I'm going to have more kids, then 
you should most likely wait on these surgeries. That's probably one of the most important questions mm -hmm. I ask patients. And that's like one of the first or second questions I ask yeah. them. So. Yeah, so you're definitely in most, in, we, we say hospital, some sort of medical facility if you're doing these combo cases. There are su surgeons that do it at their office facility and then they send people home. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think most women, especially moms, are happy to stay the night for two reasons. They're very concerned about making sure that everything is done safely. They're a mom, they don't want to die. Um, you know, so staying that night gives you a little reassurance that everything is fine. You've made it through that first night. Everything's going well. And you also get to be a night away from the chaos of your house. Oh, yeah. So for those two reasons, you know, when you're doing combination surgeries and obviously you're, you know, you, you have people at home who need you back. You I mean, sure there's been a couple times safely. during this uh, stay at home stuff that I wish I was having a mommy makeover right. and staying at the hospital. Hang out in the hospital. Well, they'd let you stay the night. They like you. Yeah, they like me. <laughs> well, they sure, Dr. Ron, come on. We Do you guys have any patient right. rooms open? <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't care about the COVID patients. Yeah. <laughs> Put you in a separate floor. Yeah. So when you're doing bigger surgeries, as we've talked about in many of our podcasts about kind of these longer duration surgeries, and I put possibly because, again, your mommy makeover is what you make it. If you need just a little bit of body tight, maybe even some face tight, like we do that in the office, you're awake. You don't need to stay That's anywhere. That's technically a mommy makeover. It is. You're a mom. You need a makeover, right. and we did it in the office that was your under makeover. local anesthesia, and you're back at it the next day. Yeah, so. but if you're having like breast surgery and a tummy tuck and a lot of lipo, it's most likely you're going to be staying at least one night, just that first night in the hospital. The one thing that there's no getting around, regardless of what you have done, you will need some extra help at home. And driving is the key thing. Right, and that's always an issue because mm -hmm. if it's the mother-in-law, it's like, uh. Well, know. or if you're, you know, your nanny needs to be around more and like yeah. then you have to make sure that your nanny's available during those times. So the husband well, always says, hey, I'm going to be there for you. I'm available. And then after a week, they're like, I got to go back to work. We got to keep making money. Yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> or they just say like, no, I'm not. I'm not interested in helping. Or, or 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 I these surgical drains are totally freaking me out. I cannot look at blood. This is disgusting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So having help that preferably a female. Well, or just to help that's going to be actually helpful. So real help, whether that's your you know, your mom, your sister, a friend, your nanny, whoever it is, you're going to need extra help for about two weeks. And driving is really the big one that yeah. most people don't plan for. As long as you're taking pain medications, you cannot drive. And if you're having surgery on your breast and your abdomen, you not only you're compromising your arm movement, but also your core is you know involved right. with driving, the pedals. You know You have to be able to react really quickly. So the last thing we want is someone to be, you know, not reacting quickly and getting a car accident right after surgery, like that's not good. So making sure that you're planning for those things ahead of time is very, very important. Yeah, the tummy tuck episode really goes through this. Mm -hmm. When you tighten your core muscles, specifically the rectus abdominis muscle, uh, anytime you move your core and people are like, oh, I don't really move my core that much. Everything you do moves your core. If you're getting from a laying to a sitting position. Well, moving the pedal from the brake to the gas. Right, walking. <laughs> uses your core. Yeah, everything yeah. uses your core. And you're going to feel it. So we def you'll definitely need pain medication probably for the first five to seven days. Also, we give a muscle relaxant. You can give Robaxin or Valium. And we, we like Valium because it helps with anxiety a little bit. Mm -hmm. Either one of those, you can't drive for at least 24, preferably 48 hours until you stop those medications. Yeah. Uh, clearly, you don't want to drive people you love around when you're medicated. And you don't want to be responsible for someone else getting hurt when you're medicated. And that would be a disaster. So... That's critical. If you can't drive, most of the moms have young kids. Those kids need to go to whatever things they need to go to. So you really do need to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also for the time off work, you know, a lot of we talked about a lot of moms that come in and have kids that are grown and out of the house. You still need help. You still need to plan for time off work, help around the house, help with driving. All of those same considerations still apply if your kids are at home or not. Um, up to I put up to two weeks because, again, if you're having something more minor done or even just maybe just a tummy tuck or just a breast lift, you might be able to be back to work in you know three to five days. So up to two weeks is just kind of thinking ahead. Like if you're having a lot of things done, obviously that time is longer. Right. Oh, drains. Drains. Oh, drains is like talking to people about politics, you know? <laughs> like everyone has a real strong feeling about drains. Mm -hmm. They don't want them. <laughs> right? I mean. Anti. Yeah. <laughs> That's their stance. They're like talking to them about vaccines, yeah. you know? I shouldn't even say that word. We're going to get canceled <laughs> off YouTube. Anti drainers. Yeah, anti drainers. <laughs> so there's like techniques to avoid drains. One of them is called quilting sutures when you do a tummy tuck. 
Um, you know, even in my town, Denver, there's people that advertise that it's like, it's like, you know, the bee's knees and it's going to make all the difference. It's all bullshit. Basically. I'm sorry for my language, but, uh, I, I do think quilting sutures are useful. I do think it decreases seroma rates or inflammatory fluid. Uh, I, I think they're helpful, but in a lot of cases, it's not going to stop seromas from forming, especially with aggressive liposuction, which we do. And a lot of those people don't. So drains are inevitable in a lot of these cases, not everyone. Uh, we technically don't really use drains with breast surgery and a mm-hmm. lot of surgeons Very do. Rarely. Yeah. Yep. You know, so it's surgeon technique mm-hmm. preference, but drains are not the end of the world. You can get those out fairly quickly. They're annoying. You feel a little burniness and pain sometimes. You have to stuff the bulbs in your pocket and it looks weird. Or just, yeah. What? Flowy clothing. I think what changes most people's minds, though, is that when they see how much fluid is coming out of those drains yeah. and are really happy that that's just not draining out all over the place right. and or building up behind their, suger- their their surgical site. And we talk a lot about that in the Tummy Tech episode. Like, I mean, there will be those first few days. I mean, some some people and drains are kind of specific to the person. How much you drain is unique to you. We'll be draining like 100 cc's out of each bulb multiple times a day. Yeah. I mean, we are super aggressive with liposuction. Yep. You're just so you drain. know. So we maybe are not the standard office. So our drains put out a lot more because we're aggressive. Any type you create raw areas is going to cause inflammatory fluid well, to be released. we're using more tumescent. And moving more yeah. tumescent. So like all of that has to come out. Right. So once you see how much comes out of your drains, it, I mean, we'll take them out as soon as they're ready. We're not going to torture you with these drains and when, um, when they're unnecessary. But when you see how much is coming out, it makes a lot of sense of like, oh my gosh, I get it. Like that's a ton of fluid that would have just had to go somewhere right. your body has to absorb it you have to break it down like you know getting it out is just better out than in you know what's funny i'm thinking about this this is on the subject of tummy tucks our first episode in our this area where we are now was tummy tucks with the weird picture with the lady with her legs crossed like she had to pee yeah yeah that was our first episode here in this uh in our, in our media room in mm-hmm. our studio hmm. so interesting come on which, which which episode are we on now nils I think this will be either 89 or 90. No, it'll be 90, 90 or 91. Oh, cool. We're almost Man, to 100. We're almost to 100. So when we do 100, so 100 is going to be during 2021. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So that, we should do it. I mean, hopefully a bit, this, this, this hellish year will be over and all the stuff we're dealing with. We should go do it on a beach somewhere. I, I am down with Are you long okay location. With that? Yes. Fly podcasting. everyone out. Okay. Yes. Live that sounds good. Audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Live studio audience. <laughs> so one other thing that's definitely a thing that you should think about prior to surgery is the need or desire for additional surgery. And that can be for many reasons. Maybe because you need a touch up. Maybe because you need a scar revision. Maybe because you don't have the money to do everything. Right. Maybe because you just want more surgery. So Thinking about that ahead of time and not like in a bad, you know, a bad way, but just knowing that like you may need or want additional surgery. The really great thing about most of these surgeries, like meaning tummy tuck and liposuction is they're mostly a one and done. Like we have redone tummy tucks. We've done additional lipo on people. But as long as you maintain your weight, like we talked about in tummy tuck, your tummy tuck results will remain the same. Yep. You don't get pregnant again. Yep. You don't have massive fluctuations in weight, meaning like 20 or more pounds. Your tummy tuck is Going to be good. Not as much so for the breast, but, yeah. you know, like I think a definitive breast lift with an augmentation besides having to, ch- well, take out the augmentation. Definitive breast lift will last fairly long. The augmentation should also last long, but sometimes you have to change the imp- imp- uh, breast augmentation is not permanent. No, that's not a one and done. Yeah. So you may have capsule contracture or scar tissue. The implant needs to be changed out, stuff like that. You have asymmetries, but yeah, these things tend to last a long time if you maintain your weight. Yeah. Natural aging occurs, hormone changes occur. This is all natural, you know, as, as over time. But the results are pretty not permanent, but on more on the permanent side. Yeah, very long lasting. Yeah. So that's it. Mommy makeover 2.0. Your mommy makeover is what you make it. Right. Let's choose your adventure yeah. surgery. So I know that people that are listening to this want to know the special sauce. The special sauce is basically this. If you go to someone that does this surgery a lot, then they'll know how to do the ingredients to make the best pizza for you. Okay. If you, if they'll they'll look at you and say, yeah, you need a breast lift or my recommendation is a breast lift, breast augmentation, tummy tuck. You don't need the augmentation. You just need the lift. You need the tummy tuck. You don't need a tummy tuck. You need body tight, that kind of thing. Make sure you go to someone who has options, right? Uh, that they do do technology-based liposuction like Body Titan. They do have these other options that you could do. If Hey, if you want a BBL, make sure you go to someone who is a specialist for BBLs and does a lot of fat transfer, okay? R- please watch our BBL episode before you do that <laughs> uh, for the safety concerns. 
So I do think that it's important to go to someone who, even though all plastic surgeons do these surgeries, but is more facile with uh, um, with doing multiple surgeries together. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was I was going to save this for a different episode, but there was a comment when I was going through reviewing some of our episodes that it was very funny. They talked about uh, how did they say it? Um, they talked about, oh, the, is it hard for a plastic surgeon to be in the OR? For, oh, yeah, for so long. That was yeah. where we were, yeah, that was on one of our episodes we were talking I about. I mean, I was reading this comment. Who are the surgeons in your OR or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah who yeah. are the people in your OR? But I was reading this comment yeah. from this this person. They're like, it's amazing that a doctor or a surgeon can stay that long in the OR and do this stuff. And to be honest with you, that's why I work out and try to stay fit. It is a lot. You Listen. Please pick a plastic surgeon that has some energy to them. Like when you walk in, they're not like, uh, I don't want to go to surgery tomorrow. Sluggish. It sucks. Like you need someone who's going to go in there and like do the work for you. This is work, physical work. I sweat. Like I burn calories. You Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Surgery's hard work. Yeah. yeah. And so you're talking about a five, six, seven hour surgery. Okay. Even with an assistant, then that takes a lot of physical energy and mental like toughness. Yeah, so find yourself a young surgeon. It doesn't be young. I'm get saying, the surgery I'm not young you anymore. want. You are young, so I'm not really. Yes, I'm not young like you. Well, yeah, you kind of are. We're in the same age group there. Yeah, you are becoming yes. an old lady. I need to get. A, I need to get like a reboot, Amy. Yes. Yeah, I need a young. You've Amy. brought that up twice now. I'm starting to get a little self conscious about it. Well, we've decided that you can't do math. Okay, um, your vision is kind of not great anymore. What are you bringing to the table here <laughs> besides your intelligence? I wanted to start like a campaign, like don't reboot Amy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we, we will let everyone go. Thank you everyone so much for listening. If you made it this far in the podcast, you got to hear that fabulous gem. That was a joke. But, obviously. Um, do you have one request for anyone listening? We would be so appreciative if you would leave us a like, a comment, a rating, a review, any of the above on any of our platforms would be so appreciated. It really does help. More than anything, it helps other people find our podcast who might be interested in hearing it. So if you don't want to share it with your friends, if you just give us a quick like, it's easy to do and it will help other people find us. So we also do a phone number and I feel desperate every time I give it out, but I'm going to. <laughs> this is okay. So I was joking before, but this is kind of embarrassing. It is. Now. Here's yeah. my number. Are you really going to give your number Call out again? Me. Yes. It is also in the show notes. Okay. Can can Nils like edit me out of this right. frame? <laughs> so if you'd like to leave us a voicemail, we we do love questions. You, as you and know, we do get a lot of questions. We actually do, but not by voice, voicemail. Not by voicemail. Yeah. So there is a voicemail. So it's 303-630-9038. And that is in the show notes along with the timestamps, all that good stuff. So, so appreciate everyone listening, watching, however you consume this. We are very appreciative. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked offers fast, affordable, and completely confidential health testing for everything from STDs, male and female hormones, and even COVID-19, right from the comfort of your own home. And remember, new customers and listeners of our podcast get 20% off by using our URL, trylgc.com beauty, and be sure to use the code beauty20 at checkout. That's try, T-R-Y-L-G-C.com slash beauty and use the code beauty20, beauty, B-E-A-T-U-Y, two zero at checkout. Get checked. It's the right thing to do.